So I guess I'm obsessed with transparent video lately, so I made this chroma key shader in Unity. So you pass it green screen footage, it removes the background, and then adds all these holographic type of effects. So yeah, it's uh, pretty fun. <laughs> okay, so the other day, my boss suggested that we use transparent video for a tutorial in our AR wine app. Well, hello there. Welcome to The Social Wall. If you want to support this winery, make a post on Instagram using the two hashtags above for a chance to show up right here. I actually liked it so much that I added it to another app that I'm working on currently. Once you have an object placed, use one finger to move the object around. Use two fingers to scale or rotate the object. So the main challenge that I ran into when implementing this transparent video into a production app was that the file size is very large. So um, you can just take, a green, take green screen footage, put it in Adobe Premiere, key out the green screen and export it as transparent video with an alpha channel and play that in Unity. But the only codecs that support uh, an alpha channel, they result in a very large file size. So if you wanted to, for example, stream that video into your app, you'd have a lot of trouble because the video file is so large. So what I ended up doing was uh, using green screen footage, playing that in Unity, but using a chroma key shader to key out the green screen in real time in Unity. So that way you can have very small videos that you can stream into the app and then key out the green screen in real time. So what I thought we could do today was make a really cool shader in Unity that gave us that whole Star Wars futuristic hologram look. Like it would key out the green screen, but also add some holographic effects on top of it. So I thought we could do a tutorial on this, but I ended up working on this for like six hours today. It was like a black hole. The lightweight render pipeline changed the universal render pipeline and then the shader got really complicated and I don't even think I can do a tutorial on this, but I did make it and I think it turned out pretty good. So what we're going to do today is I'm just going to put this project up on our GitHub and you guys can download it. I'll show you how to get the best results with it and I'll show you a little bit of how it works behind the scenes. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to github.com slash third dash Aurora. I'll put the link to this down in the description. But go to repositories and you're going to see transparent video shader. I just put this up two hours ago. Um, code and download the zip and we're going to open this up in Unity. Okay, so once you have this project opened up in Unity, double click the main scene. And then if you haven't been following along with our other videos, uh, this project just is, is a base project for AR Foundation. It allows you to detect ground planes and then you tap the screen to place an object on the ground plane. Okay, and then the only other thing that this um, project has is this canvas. Uh, we have this transparent button here. Um, there actually is a toggle there if you pull up this alpha. And all this toggle does is it toggles off the visibility of the ground planes and the point clouds so you can turn them off if you want to screen record something. Okay. So that's what this base project does. And then what I added to this in addition to this transparent video was first of all, I added this scale parent because I wanted to be able to scale my hologram up and down because you know what they say about guys with big holograms. So this touch interaction script does just that. It just takes uh, two finger touches and scales the object accordingly. Uh, the scale parent is actually um, set at the bottom, like the origin is set at the bottom of the video. So if you scale this scale parent, um, it scales without moving on the Y. So you can scale it up and it will always kind of stay up above the ground. So that was the idea there. Okay, so we have that. And then <clears throat> we also have this video scaler script that if you open this up, uh, this will just adjust the scale of the video mesh to match the proportions of the video that you're trying to play. So that's all the new stuff that we have there. And then beyond that, we just have this transparent video shader that this whole video is about. So uh, we have a video player on this quad. That's what's playing the video. Um, source, it's playing a video clip here. I'll probably go into more detail explaining how I got this clip later, but for now it's just a green screen video clip that's hard coded in the app. Um, the file size I think is actually pretty large. I believe it's like 20 megabytes or something right now, 21 megabytes, but you could compress this and you could probably get it down to like five megabytes and it would still look pretty decent. So if you wanted to then change the source to URL, you could stream that in very easily. And then, um, here is this transparent video shader. So I wanted, really wanted to do a tutorial on this, but honestly, if we look at this shader graph, I'm not very good with shader graph and I don't even know how I got it here. It was just a ton of Googling today. So I am pretty sure that I would be incapable of making a tutorial explaining all these different pieces to you because I don't think I could do this again, to be honest. But for now, 
let's just go through all of the configurable details about this so that you guys can play with it yourself. So if we click play in the editor here, you'll see that video starts playing. And so this first uh, texture, texture 2D that we have exposed here in the shader, that's what's taking the frames from the video. So um, in my shader, I have the main texture 2D reference name set to underscore base map. So that's why that's chosen up here so that it accepts that texture from the video. And then you have your key color here. So um, you could actually key out any color that you want, um, but green is typically the standard because it's like the least naturally occurring color. So if you were to import a video into your app, um, you could just use this little color picker here and click the green color that you used and use that as your key color. And then you can turn up and down this threshold to key out as much or as little as you want. And then you also have this emissive color here. So you can change the overlay color of this wherever you want. Uh, you could change this holograph texture to whatever else you wanted and get something else scrolling on there. But I like these lines here. And then you can change the hologram tiling here. So if you wanted like big lines, you can make it one. And then you could change the hologram speed to like 0.1 to make them go faster or slower. But I think the bigger the lines, the more difficult it is to see the video. So that's why I went with like kind of a high tiling and maybe a little bit faster speed. So it makes the video more legible, but then it's a little bit hard to see the lines, but I don't know. You guys can play with that, make it do whatever you want. And then the last item that I added to the shader was I wanted some kind of like feathering effect on the edges. So I added um, like displacement to the video. So here you kind of get like this watery type of effect. But if you were to move the tiling up really high and then change the displacement amount, uh, you can see how you could start to get like a, like a feathered pixelated kind of look. Okay, so the main thing to do in order to pre prepare your video for this shader is you need a really clean um, chroma key with a green screen background already there. So this was my output here on the right. And then this was my input here on the left before I ran through Adobe Premiere. Okay. So in Adobe Premiere, you just want to use, um, I'm not going to do a full like explainer on this, but they're everywhere. But basically you want to use uh, an ultra key uh, set to aggressive and then change the um, matte generation uh, values here to get like a nice clean um, chroma key of your background. And then I used, uh, an opacity mask um, in order to key out my feet. So you'll see here that I had to like key around my feet to get the box that I was standing on out of the footage. Okay. And then I put in the unity project in the images, there's a green screen. This is like the best color that I found for this green screen shader, like a bright neon green. Cause it's very like uh, unnatural that you'll see that in the wild. So I did put that color in the assets folder. So use that image and then put this image um, as the green screen in your footage before you export it. So now when you export it, uh, let's see here, file, export, media. Um, I exported this at um, a high bit rate and the file size was like 20 megabytes for like a 15 second video or something. But for my production apps when I did it, I did do an adaptive low bit rate and that resulted in a much smaller file size. And I really did not notice like that uh, large of a difference in quality. And actually I think it would work fine for this app because we're using that uh, holographic effect. So honestly, like worse quality is going to probably enhance the effect in this situation. All right. So that's it. That's all I got for today. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you do use the shader and you post something online, definitely tag me in it. I love seeing stuff like that, but um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So with that, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.